Hey guys, in today's spot, we're going to be checking out the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends series. This is Daredevil's Elektra. Electra's first appearance in the comic books was in Daredevil 168 back in 1981. Mind you, her appearance here is taken from the Daredevil series, which her first appearance was in 2015. Just before we have a look at all of her accessories, of course, what we're going to do first, let's get the tape measure going. She stands a little over six inches tall. For the Build-A-Figure component for Man-Thing, she comes with one of the legs. This will at least help to man to have Man-Thing at least stand on his own. I'm gonna go ahead and take the foot, of course, making sure that the inner arch, this section right here, faces inward, so we know it's this leg here. It seems like, I don't know recently, but it seems gone are the days where they've used the, the small and large peg. Now it seems like they use large pegs for both sides, which I'm perfectly fine for. Even though we don't technically have a head yet, we can kind of gauge how tall Man-Thing's gonna be versus the smaller standard Marvel Legends figures. Really fantastic looking sculpting on the legs. You got the little mossy area, lower area of Man-Thing. It's gonna be a great looking figure when it's finished. It's not finished yet though, so we're gonna move it to the side. She comes with uh, two accessories and then an interchangeable head. The accessories are a pair of Psy. Yes, apparently it's not size for plural, it's psi. So she gets two of those, and they are slightly on the rubbery side. You can display them in her hand, and this is one thing I wish that the figure had, because the figure does have a lot of great aspects to it. But what's, uh, what's neat and what's a bit of a disappointment, so to speak, is that she has only two hands. One hand has the means to hold the psi like this. And I guess to that extent, you can also have it facing the opposite way too. If you want to have her, you know, if you want to have her holding the side like that. The other hand, on the other hand, this hand here has something really cool. Uh, not only can you hold the psi like this, but if you have a look at her fingers, her fingers are clenched so that you can actually have the psi held this way or you can also have the psi held this way. And just get that in between her fingers. Uh, that looks really cool, but I kind of wish that she had had the same hands swapped and as extra hands. So she could have had two of those hands and two of these hands included with the figure. It seems strange to me that they tease you with one hand being able to do so much and yet, unfortunately, the other hand doesn't have that options available. Like why they couldn't have simply just have the figure release with two, two of the variation of the hands, one pair of each, basically. The other thing that she comes included with, of course, is her interchangeable head. This is the defaulted head that she comes with out of packaging, which has a really pa a beautiful pair of, of eyes. Like that is some of the nicest sculpted eyes on a Marvel Legends figure, in my in my own honest opinion. I think that really looks quite nice. But if you want to have something without the mask, she does also come with this head sculpt too. Which again, looks quite nice. I'm not really sure which one I prefer more so. I mean, this one kind of gets you the full look of the figure. She reminds me of somebody, and I can't quite place who it is, and I'm hoping between now and the end of this review, I'm going to know who this is. But it, it reminds me of somebody, and don't say Electra. it reminds me of somebody else, and I'm drawing an absolute blank. I don't get it as much this way, but when I turn the figure's head slightly this way, it looks like somebody I, I know, not, not directly, but looks like somebody I know from, like, movie or TV. And I can't, can't quite, I was going to say Cindy Crawford. It's not Cindy Crawford, it's somebody else. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. It's going to drive me crazy. But the head sculpt is beautiful on both of them. Might favor maybe displaying her with this one, but I do like, I also do like the mask over top of her face. So there's a couple of different options available. The hair is also very similar to one another. There's not much that's different between the two. 
Oh, it's driving me crazy. That looks like somebody. And I don't, oh, I, can't, I can't figure out who it is. By the way, to change out the head, simply just grab onto the torso here and just pop it. And let me also draw your attention to the extremely large ball joint on this particular figure. Pop it back in, you get a nice satisfying pop. And there is the interchangeable head. I don't know, I kind of like, you know what, now that I'm looking at it more and more, I kind of dig the unmasked face myself. But again, it's entirely up to you which way you want to display her. It is driving me crazy who that looks like, and I can't, can't quite place who it is. Somebody can tell me, uh, hopefully down below. The rest of her outfit is very simplistic. Um, she actually does, let me just bring her in right now, seems to have the exact same lower torso as uh, Jessica Jones. The e exact same torso. Of course, right down to the boots as well. And then Jessica Jones, they've just capped with uh, the very still un unruly uh, top part of her boots that just does not want to sit low enough. I'm going to probably just glue those into place just to keep them where they are so they're not moving around on me. But uh, they are the exact same lower torso, not much different at all, other than the fact that, of course, Electra's got hers in painted black. Uh, the flesh tone is a nice uh, coloring. It doesn't look too pale, doesn't look too warm. Um, generally not too bad on the torso, the sculpt and the paint's pretty clean. It looks like there's a little bit of the black that's carried over into her collar just by the way it's carried itself over from, you know, the uh, the top collar part. There's, a, there's an area on the back of her shirt that looks like it wants to be something and instead it looks like it's just been paint that's removed off. You can see how it's just got that little bit of wear that's come off of the figure. And that's actually out of packaging. I haven't done anything differently. Scout's Honor, I haven't done anything differently to the to the torso. But it looks like there's a little bit of paint faux pas right there on the back. The rest of the paint's pretty clean other than the collar and the back of the torso. The arms come across a little thick, dare I say. A little on the thick side. I guess it makes sense, but it does seem like it's awfully broad for a forearm, at least on a female figure. Looks like she's almost got like Popeye arms. Na -na 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 uh, the gloves are painted nicely in the red and you've got the fingertips in black got the little cuff there now again it looks like the forearm this is some, something i'll probably talk about a couple more times and then we'll just put it to bed but the forearms look like they don't go nearly thin enough uh, when by the time it gets to gets to the uh, the wrist area there it should thin itself out a fair bit but instead it almost kind of looks comes across like a, a small boy's calf than it does a female uh, woman's arm. It should taper itself off a little bit and instead it remains thick all the way to the hand. A little small, little nitpick here. Other than that though, other than the little paint problems and uh, the forearms seeming to be a little big, the rest of the figure is quite beautiful. Still can't, oh, the face is gonna bother me. Uh, let's go through her posability. Her head is on the ball joint, but it's also on a hinge ball joint too. So it hinges up and down, but then you've got the benefit of having that ball jointed as well. So you can even have a slight nod back and forth. I say slight. I mean, that's greater than a slight. What's greater than a slight? I don't know. Considerable? Would considerable be a, a next grade up from slight? She's got universal joints in the arms, so they rotate all the way around and hinge outward. Has a bend at the elbow rotation at the forearm area and she's got a rotation and hinge in the hand upper torso ball joints so you can rotate the torso all the way around she's got thank goodness for that new articulation or the not new new but at least she's got the new articulation where you don't have to swivel the leg to rotate it forward uh, the universal joint or ball joint that she's got in the lower leg is very accommodating to pretty much anything you want to do with the figure she has a rotation basically in the top swivel cut of the thigh. This sounds like we're treading over waters we've been over before. Yeah, because basically all the same stuff was also on Jessica Jones. The hinge on the leg, got the double bend at the knee there. Uh, she also has the hinge in the foot. She gets an ankle rocker. And of course, much like Jessica Jones, she's got peg holes on the underside of her feet. I 
quite like this Electra figure. In fact, I would almost even say I like it more than the Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones had a really good likeness, but I think this is an overall total package figure for having a great head sculpt, great paint application, and generally just a really nice body mold. But the only thing I would say I would have changed about the figure is its very glaring, noticeable forearms. It looks like a small child's bare legs wearing a pair of shorts. The figure's uh, forearms, I feel, could have been tapered off a little bit better closer to the wrist area, so it didn't seem like she had such broad forearms. The hands are a nice touch, but I kind of wish that she could have come with variations of the hands that she currently has that could have also been used on the other socket as well. So that little pinching, uh, grabbing claw that, uh, hand that she has for the one side, I wish she could have also been able to have that on the other side as well, which could have given a much more dynamic way to display the figure. Despite that, and despite that little bit of smudging on the back of the torso, which I'm sure is only specific to my figure, overall, this is a great figure. And I could easily see this probably making my top three favorites from this line. Speaking of this line, if you would like to add this line to your collection, along with some other fantastic selections of Marvel Legends, you can head over to the folks over at Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, I'll put the link down below, so if you guys are interested in picking up this uh, man thing line for yourself, I'll put the link down below. You guys can click down below and order it directly now from Big Bad Toy Store. Stay tuned, guys. Certainly, uh, we're going to have a lot more looks at uh, the rest of the figures in this line because there's still about four figures left to go. And then, of course, we're going to have a look at Man Thing. So lots of videos heading your way. If you guys haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that little subscribe button down below. You won't miss a beat when it comes to future videos. And I'll see you guys next time.